to help us truly to make this game better and and we're pretty happy with what with the trackmania we have right now so yeah just play trackmania it's free and and have fun on it i'm pretty sure you'll have and yeah that's it all right, Omar, thank you so much. Trackmania, folks, it's out now on Epic Game Store and you play. Go ahead and download it. Get in there and get racing. Now, our time with Trackmania is coming to a close and it's on to the next show. Ubisoft Forward pre-show is starting momentarily. We're going to take a look at Ghost Recon, Breakpoint, The Crew 2, Trials Rising, new stuff coming from all these games. You're not going to want to miss it. And then when the countdown timer hits zero, it's Ubisoft Forward, the big showcase of the latest and greatest upcoming games from Ubisoft, followed by an in-depth look at Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We got a lot more in store for you, so let's go ahead and throw it over to Kat. Thank you, Chris, and hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ubisoft Forward pre-show. The main event will be starting in just 30 minutes and will feature news from our unreleased games, including Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Hyperscape, and more. Now to warm up, we have 30 minutes of this from the games you're already playing, like Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Trials Rising, and The Crew 2, as well as some exclusive behind the scenes so you can get to know us a little better. So let's kick off this pre-show with an update from Just Dance 2020. to their stream. So um, I'm just getting started a bit early here since they got a pre-show going. Set things up at the moment. So sorry I've been on Just Dance fan and want to win some cool swag, head over to the Just Dance website for all the details. For our next segment, we have something a little different than what we usually do. A few years ago, Ubisoft created the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Lab and the Open Innovation Accelerator. This allowed us to create partnerships and synergies with indie studios from across the industry. And since so many industry events were canceled this year, uh, we wanted to showcase several indie projects and teams that Ubisoft has been collaborating with over the past few years. Our first indie showcase is developer Machine and Mensch, who is working on the Curious Expedition 2. Let's hear more from the team behind the game. Hi, my name is Masha and I'm a game designer at Machine Mensch. Machine Mensch is a small and diverse indie game studio with eight wonderful employees based here in Berlin. Our connection with Ubisoft came through a program dedicated to create ever-growing relationships with independent developers, to talk about and share expertise and knowledge. We work together in mutual respect, which we much appreciated. We're working on the Cures Expedition 2, which is the sequel to our Expedition Simulation game. This time, the game is set in Paris in 1899, during the World Expo when the Eiffel Tower was built. But more importantly, you will be traveling to these mysterious islands, you will be interacting with unknown tribes, fight dangerous beasts, find many secrets. Thanks to our procedure technology, every time you play, it's a new world, new characters, and a new storyline that you shape with each of your interactions until it becomes really your own unique adventure. The guy I love, it looks like Ubisoft's website is screwing up. I'm trying to sign in so I can freaking do the Uplay thing. And we will have more giveaway. indie guests coming up later in the pre-show, so stick around. Now, a while ago, Ubisoft released its very first live action TV show on Apple TV+. And it's a comedy about making video games called Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet. And to keep the show authentic, Ubisoft's Redstorm Studio went above and beyond by creating a playable sandbox for the game that is actually featured in the show. So now let's head behind the scenes for an exclusive look. This is the home of Clancy. Okay, it's very Clancy-esque. Yes. I get it, all right, now I'm starting to understand. Right. I too keep all my awards at the front of my office. It's entirely empty. So Mythic Quest 
is uh, Ubisoft's first live action comedy. The whole show is about a team that is developing a super successful MMORPG and it's about, you know, all the all the people within the game development team and their relationships and what they go through in creating one of the world's most successful games. All right. Incredible. Thank you. But are we sure that we're finished. When we heard about what was going on, we weren't really sure if we were a great fit because we always made shooters realistic. And we listened to the pitch and we were super excited about the idea. So we thought, all right, what's, what does Ubisoft have oh. that we could channel to fit the this? Alerts through. You're, you're fucking me. Yes. Right. You're fucking me. But I'm not enjoying I it. It's I for the game. When we started on the project, I think we imagined we would huh. just make video clips that would run on screens in the background or something. So it would feel like a real game studio. But once we saw the script, once we started collaborating with the team, we realized, oh, they want a game, like an actual game. Of course, making an actual game would take years. So we started selecting the pieces that they really needed for certain scenes. And from there, it was not long before we said, you know, what if we make this actually that's playable? What if we make it so you can connect a controller outfit, and control okay. the characters? And so that's what we ended up doing. The thing that I love most is the shuffle. <laughs> Exploding people's heads with this thing is straight fire. Crunch, man. We had requests to do things like make a contagious viral disease in which people bleed out of their eyeballs first, uh, then they bleed out of their anus, then they vomit and bleed out of their anus at the same time. What the fuck? Oh. 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 We set it up in such a way that you could trigger it in stages because we didn't know what the timing was going to be. The idea here is we can hit it and it can control the timing of, of when things are happening. So the next time you hit it, he starts puking out blood. And at this point, we would probably have the camera start panning back like this. And then you can hit the button again and you can see the blood ocean itself has started coming in. Yeah, and so now this they're is all bleeding out of the back annoying. end as well. And then it's the like I was already signed in, ready to go, and then it's and fucking signed me out, and I can't sign back in because there's so much down. <laughs> he wanted the skulls coming up and bobbing up and down in the water, so. Uh -huh. David, can we actually make this quick? I've got a lot of work to do, stripping blood ocean out of everything. Yeah, yeah. Releasing a disease into the game right before a global pandemic was not a great look. Today was the first time we showed Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet to an audience. I've never seen it with more than six or seven people in a room. And so I wanted to make sure that we gave them an opportunity to hopefully recognize that this is a giant love letter to them, to the industry itself. I was a little nervous, I gotta be honest. I thought it was gonna be a little cringy, but it was fantastic. I thought there was a lot of truth and in the humor. It's about time that we had a show about our industry. You could tell when the audience was laughing, when they really hit something that, that felt like the game industry. I think it's brilliant. All right, so if you have not yet seen it, uh, the first season of Mythic Quest Raven's Banquet is available right now on Apple TV Plus, and a full version of this making of will be coming out over the next few days. All right, now it is time to fasten your seatbelts and start your engines. Okay. As we head out to Lyon, France, to visit our team at Ubisoft Ivory Tower to get an update on the crew, the crew. too. Okay, yep. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Crew 2 at Ubisoft Forward. My name is James Reese. I'm a community developer here at Ivory Tower, and I'll be your host for this quick glimpse into all the exciting things we have going on over the next few weeks. It's been two years already since launch, with six major updates and hundreds of vehicles under our belt. And our latest update, Summer in Hollywood, only went live a few days ago. Let's have a look. God, hopefully they pick some shit eventually. Alternatively, I guess the switch drops to the plane. And that might still work. for you to get your hands on what's coming. There have been a few speed bumps along the way, but over the past two years, you, the community, have made the Crew 2 a motorsports playground where all players are welcome 
and where anything is possible. So thank you to the crew Social, Exchange, Discord, Reddit, and all of our players. We've got a little something for you in-game to show our appreciation. It's the 67 Volkswagen Beetle. Okay. So let's see what kind of Hollywood twist you can put on it. That's it from me. There'll be more news dropping over summer, so keep your eyes peeled. Starting with this. Let me in case you log missed it, it log be in. sure to boot up the game right now to unlock the amazing 69 God, I want to boot up the game to get it, but also I don't want to fucking crash. And stay tuned in the near future for more info about year three of the crew two. Our next video is from our second indie guest, Bossa Studios, who will be injecting a delirious dose of fun with Surgeon Simulator 2. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Nick from Bossa Studios, and I'm a senior game designer on the upcoming Surgeon Simulator 2. So at Bossa, we're always keen to share game development knowledge, and Ubisoft has been a fantastic partner in this. They deliver lectures on procedural content development and player science. And in turn, we shared with them the ideation processes that we use to develop initial ideas into living, breathing games. Which brings me on to Surgeon Simulator 2. We've really doubled down on the physics-based pandemonium that the series is notorious for and we've pretty much expanded on every other aspect of the game as well. So this time around, you're no longer just a floating and confined to the operating table. You're actually a full first-person surgeon with an entire medical facility to explore. I like that they're doing these indie hearts. And in addition to the levels that you'll find in story mode, you'll now be able to create your own unique levels and experiences using Bossa Labs creation mode. So it's a really easy to use, intuitive set of tools that allows players to create either on their own or let me log in. multiplayer with up to three friends. Everything players create can then be uploaded and shared with the community. And here, surgery really is just the tip of the iceberg. During our closed alpha period, we've seen players create all sorts of amazing stuff. From bowling alleys to space stations, pirate ships to horror-themed escape rooms. And this is before the game is even released. So we absolutely cannot wait to see what players create when we launch the game this coming August. And in fact, if you pre-order Surgeon Simulator 2, you can receive exclusive closed beta access. So for those of you who are just joining us, you are watching the pre-show and Ubisoft Forward will start once the countdown on your screen reaches zero. And make sure you log into Uplay to unlock rewards as you watch the main event. But now our next segment is about an Easter egg I in would, the Division 2. So let's go behind the scenes with the devs from Ubisoft Massive Studio in Malmo, Sweden to find out more. Running through collapsed buildings, climbing over fallen debris, and encountering makeshift living spaces is common for players of the Division 2. Within its post-pandemic environment, many players have spotted something a bit more unusual, which has left them asking, what's up with all of these rubber ducks? What the fuck? So there's a thing in, in programming especially where you, you talk to a rubber duck and it's a way to solve your problems. If you talk to a rubber duck and you just say things out loud, it helps. One of our artists decided to take this to another level and he used the rubber duck scaled up to like a ginormous scale and put it in the level just to remind him to do something. And it sat there for a while and the rest of us kind of really loved this giant rubber duck sitting there for so long. We decided to put a little memorial to it across the world. What started off as little memorials, and then we started adding stories to them. So there's one where these two ducks are sitting on a bench having a date together. And there's another one somewhere where he's sitting with an umbrella hiding from the rain. The idea of the ducks is similar to the rest of our storytelling, where we're trying to add some hope into the world. Because you're coming in as a division agent to try and save what you can and rebuild. But you need to know there's something there to save. So having bits of happiness lets you know like it's still worth saving for these little happy moments. One shrine in particular became a beloved fan favorite, showing up multiple times across YouTube and Reddit. So, uh, Karen, 
How was your day? Well, Luke, it's been productive. So the origin story of productive, one of our level designers made an amazing pun one day and we decided to make a graffiti out of it and put it in the game and it became like a duck shrine and, and players started finding it and wondering where it came from. We've been finding these rubber duckies all over the map. It says here on the wall in graffiti productive and there's a large rubber ducky bigger than all the other ones we've found and he's uh he's he's got bottles of booze all around him not only that but he has a couple soldier duckies guarding a parrot in a cage but there's there's more just like this in the division too what's really great about our community is they come together they find a common thing that they want to develop or find or get unlocked and they just put time and effort into it we don't put them in easy to find places so that means players are genuinely, hopefully, enjoying just exploring the environment and finding all these little Easter eggs we've hidden around. And also not the Easter eggs, just the main part of the game and all the storytelling we put into it. I haven't found all of them. I don't know exactly how many there are, but they haven't found all of the ducks yet. Encouraged by the community's response to the ducks, developers recently hid another secret in the game and made it the focal point of an all-new community challenge we actually put Tommy the Teddy Bear into the game. Well, Tommy the Teddy Bear is a trauma teddy mentioned in a lot of lore, but the bear itself actually was not in the game. With episode three, we put a bunch of them into the world, actually opened up Easter egg hunt for him specifically. It's a nice little exciting moment when you kind of open Reddit and you see someone's found the thing that you kind of just snuck in under the radar and no one really knows about it and it, some of the players are really clever. There's, there's some uh, hard Easter eggs that some of the level designers and gameplay designers have put in, and people have managed to solve it with no help whatsoever. Gamers are smart. <laughs> so now that you know, be on the lookout for both ducks and teddy bears next time you boot up The Division 2. We now have our final indie guests, Thunder Lotus Games, who were the 2017 winner of the indie series that took place in Montreal. So let's find out more about the beautiful coziness of Spirit Fair in this next video. Hey everybody, I'm Rodrigue, marketeer at Thunder Lotus. We're a Nindy studio based out of Montreal, Canada, and makers of the games Jotun, Sundered, and our new game, Spirit Fair, okay, which is yeah, due out later this year. Xbox. Last For the past year. six years, we've tried to make uh, AAA quality games with a hand-drawn indie heart. Hitting a quality standard consistently in game dev is a huge challenge. There's so much trial and error on the path. And during the Sundered production, we were lucky enough to have the Ubisoft Entrepreneurs Program in our corner to help us reach our goals. As uh, co-winners of the Ubisoft Indie Series in 2017, we received not only generous funding, but also uh, crucial mentorship and access to the Ubisoft testing facilities. So we're grateful to Ubisoft for their support support and helping us make what would become our biggest success to date. We've taken that experience with us onto what is our most ambitious production yet, and that's Spiritfarer, uh, which we're calling a cozy management game about dying. In Spirit Fair, you play Stella, uh, the newly appointed fairy master to the deceased. And as Stella, you're going to build a boat, you're going to explore the world in search of spirit passengers uh, seeking passage to the there. afterlife. You're going to spend relaxing quality time with them, you're going to create lasting memories, but ultimately, you're going to have to learn how to say goodbye to your cherished friends. It's a game that's near and dear to our hearts, and, and something really special. We, we can't wait to share it with the world later this year. So look for it soon on uh, PC, on Xbox One, PS4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox Game Pass. Thanks a lot, and cheers. It is time for an update on our favorite motorcycle platformer with the insanity, pain, and triumph we all know and we all love. Trials Rising came out last year, but I think the team from our Red Link studio in Helsinki has a little surprise coming to the game for the fans of the franchise. So let's take a look. Hi, we're here today to introduce you to an exciting new endurance challenge coming to Trials Rising. But to make sure that we respect social distancing guidelines, Auntie and I decided John! to- John! Do I fire the goose now? What? Fire the goose? Fire the goose! <laughs> okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Giga Track. Oh. 
Far from a remake of the classic track from Trials Evolution, this is an all new journey across the world of Trials Rising, in by far the longest track that we've ever put in a trial. Come on! Did you tell him he's the longest track ever? Yeah, I'm telling him that! By far the longest track we've ever put in a Trials game. The Giga Track will take you across many different environments from the iconic. Yeah, I was just... Maybe you want to tell them. The Giga Track. Uh, it's like life. Damn it starts and, and it ends and it's long. Depends how you enjoy it. And also one secret thing. Four tells transfer to one. Prepare for the ultimate test of Trials Endurance. Giga Track releases this Thursday, July 16th for the low, low oh, price. I didn't even there was a message post earlier with me follow the stream jar. You heard that right, Riders. Giga Track will be available for free to all Trials Rising players when it releases this Thursday. I only the same starts before the event starts because with the top reward we'll require you watching heard for that's 40 right. minutes. Giga that's probably going to be almost the whole event that they need to watch. Most so nobody's going to be able to get that. History, they can't log in. Be free for all Trials Rising players. Now for our last game update, the Ghost Recon Breakpoint team is ready to share some details okay, on Ghost their Recon. upcoming updates. Yeah. AI teammates are coming to the game. Let's have a look at the trailer. The time has come. AI teammates are back in Ghost Recon Breakpoint. And for all solo players, they're gonna be a game changer. Available at any point after you have reached Erewhon for the first time, Fury, Fixit, and Vasily can be activated or dismissed at will. And from the beginning, you will be able to fully customize them. This customization includes all of the physical attributes, as well as gear, equipment, or even full costumes. Your teammates can be tweaked just as much as your main character. Just like Nomad, your teammates will adapt and react to the world of Aroa and its environments and they will always follow your own behavior. If you decide to go stealth, they will equip silencers and crouch, or go prone when possible. But if you decide to go loud and open fire, they will stick by your side. When deployed, you can issue different orders to your teammates through the order wheel. There are four different orders you can give to your teammates. You can tell them to regroup on your location, to hold their current position, to go to a specific location, and to open fire on nearby enemies. These orders can be given at any time, even through your binoculars and drone. Once they approach potential threats, the teammates will notify you and mark them automatically. Got a hostile. With a good look at your enemies, you will be able to set up a sync shot where each of your teammates picks a target. You can even link it to your three sync shot drones for a simultaneous seven target takedown. The teammates have weapons equipped at all times, a versatile assault rifle to accommodate all situations, and a primary weapon that you will be able to fine-tune. Indeed, apart from mark upgrades and passive bonuses, the full gunsmith is accessible to your teammates. And their weapon uh... of choice will have a direct effect on the battleground. Depending on the type of weapon they have equipped, the teammates will adapt their engagement distance and rate of fire. From close distance shotgun oh, wielding, sure. Let me log in. all the way to long distance sniper shots. Of course, if you get taken down, your teammates' priority will be to try and rescue you. To achieve that, they will first focus their fire on the surrounding enemies before getting to you. And they will expect the same from you, especially as you will be able to carry them to safety if the situation requires it. Finally, the teammates will also be your best allies in any vehicle especially on the road and during high-stake pursuits. The teammates will be available for all solo Ghost Recon Breakpoint players on July 15th, and we cannot wait to see your reactions. We'll see you on the battlefield, Ghosts. Hey, Ghosts. I'm Grace from the Ghost Recon team. As you've just seen, the AI teammates are finally landing in Ghost Recon Breakpoint with our next major update on July 15th. Alongside the AI teammates, this update comes with a ton of new content, including a gunsmith upgrade, new PvP content, quality of life updates, and more. You will be able to try it all during our next free weekend from July 16th to July 20th. But that's not all. We've got one last thing to show you. Enjoy, and we'll see you on Aroa, Ghosts.
To anyone listening, this is Haruhi Ito, speaking for the outcasts. Ugh. I mean, not that I really care that much if I do end up missing that game, because, I mean... We stand against I mean, I'm probably never gonna play it anyway, but, I mean, it would kind of just be nice to get the free game. We yeah. on all of Aroa to join us. And I see I Separated, have dropped some frays. Sentinel wins. Bad, but, um... But united? We cannot probably because I got a street and running in the damn background. And people here, it sounds like. Damn dogs are walking. And now our very final video for this pre-show is another episode of our WOW moments compiling the craziest and coolest clips from you, our players. Okay. That was a backup plan. I could always open up their Twitch. Because I'm pretty sure I already got my account connected to, um... Oh, it's more. Um... Or drop some maybe that'll still work even I'll if the, um, him. Oh, you get here. Even if their stuff doesn't. Yeah, so this drops and enables up. Interrogate him. Oh, you can interrogate this guy though. Oh, okay. So there's a line that people want me to yell, uh, but I can't usually do it because I'll freak out my neighbors. But as you can see, I'm at the crashing ocean beach and there's no one too close. So, reloading! Fuck, someone told me, I gotta go. Hey, uh, goddammit. If you also have amazing gameplay segments you captured from our games, spread the joy and submit them on the link displayed on your screen right now. All right, guys, it is time. It for looks to like wrap Twitch already started. Well, Don't forget to stay tuned for our post show so featuring well. a deep dive into the world of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Thanks a lot for watching this pre show and enjoy Ubisoft Forward. <laughs> Oh, well. If I get the drops, I get the drops, I guess. This, this is Ubisoft. This is Ubisoft. Okay. Explore our world. Oh, we got Meet the devs. Oh, yeah. I just realized. We still haven't seen, like, God of Monsters or whatever come out. Which is supposed to come out, like, the game this year, so. When, when that's coming out. Hi everyone, I'm Neelam Kumar and I'm very excited to be co-hosting the first Ubisoft Forward with the talented Yusuf Magid. Today's show is all about getting up close and in-depth like with all the exciting style. games we have in production here at Ubisoft. I'm Yusuf, but there's no time to waste. So let's head straight for the streets of futuristic London.
and see what the hackers of DeadSec are getting into. Okay, so I already start off with... The illegal shots, painting, yep. spreading subversive and hostile messaging over the last few weeks across London are not the work of several people, as was originally believed, but the work of an individual. The criminal, suspected to have links with the terrorist group, is masked to be dangerous. <laughs> Authorities recommend not to approach the individual. First, they came for the foreigners, and I did not speak out because I was not a foreigner. Then, they came for the protesters, and I did not speak out because I was not a protester. Of this trailer, though. Then they came for the journalists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a journalist. And then they came for street artists, and I did not speak out, because I am not a street artist. to speak for me. to the resistance there's a welcome gift why the hell does he got fucking big members. hats the disappearance of the criminal Layers. you could have told me it was a bloody costume party try it off the new key suspect has been identified as david ford a 43 year old london taxi driver he has no criminal record but is currently believed to be a terrorist people have been asked not to approach him the authorities advise all residents God, that was a pretty damn good trailer. I'm Clint Hawking. Clint has been a longtime creative force here at Ubisoft, and now he's bringing this vision to Watch Dogs Legion. Um, so yeah, what we just saw was an amazing short film by the director Alberto Mielgo that uh, was inspired by Watch Dogs Legion and looks at, at the game and the universe and the characters through his incredible uh, artistic vision and visual style. The city needs a resistance. Like the film, Watch Dogs Legion tells the story of ordinary heroes setting aside their differences in order to come together as a collective and to fight for a positive change. You can literally recruit and play anyone who you see in the open world. Gotta you profile people Randy, that are interesting to you. Best you character. help them with their problem. You play their origin mission. Just help me get some closure and I'll do whatever you want. Sounds like a dead sec problem. 
leave it to us. And that's how you recruit them into your team. And then they become the heroes of the game and, and the stars of your story. And what are you doing in my flat? You with Albion? Please, think more underground. You with Albion? I'm tickled, but think more underground. There's what, the granny. Yeah, right, and I'm Che Guevara. You're done. But yeah, this has got to be like the most ambitious thing ever. Not only, you know, unique to them, but unique to you as the player and, and personal to you because they're, you know, heroes that you've chosen and invested in. What would I say to fans? I guess I'd say, you know, uh, take care of yourselves, stay safe. Welcome to the resistance. Ah, London town. A modern metropolis. Built on history and prosperity. Only took 12,000 years to build it up and one night to tear it all down. Oh my God. Listen up. Get all your units to move in and lock down the city. With London under attack by a mysterious terrorist, the government turns to a private military company called Albion to keep everyone safe. What could possibly go wrong? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Nigel Cass, CEO of Albion. He's kindly stepped up to establish order. Understand this. I will not allow anyone, not even myself, to jeopardize this. He will stop at nothing to permanently control the city. London will be the first city in the world to be made truly safe. Nigel's not the only opportunist who's taken a liking to this fair city. Meet Mary Kelly, head of the most okay. powerful crime syndicate in London. Be sure and spread the word. She and her goons are using the dark web to sell everything from party pills to people. This microchip is scary, I know, but I've got to keep tracks on my merchandise, don't I? You made me a slave. You do not want to ruffle her feathers. With the city out on its ass, it now falls on you to build a resistance and take back London. All right, everyone. Faces on, guns out. Any of the brave Londoners you see walking the streets can be recruited into your team. Like him. Her. Or even her. Everyone could become your next secret weapon. <laughs> In our first mission, we need to get some dirt on Nigel Cass, and that means breaking into Albion headquarters inside the Tower of London. All the hardy souls you see here are people we have recruited from the streets of London. They all have unique abilities, and you're free to tackle this mission with whoever you like. Dear God, my eyes. Bagley. Zip up, get to work, and let's never talk about this again. Like everyone in DedSec, Arthur can hack pretty much whatever. But as a construction worker, he has a particular set of tools that make him handy. He can even call his own cargo drone. Perfect for gate crashing when you're not invited. And who needs a regular old gun when you have a bloody nail gun? Shit Jesus Christ, what is that thing? Perhaps we could approach this mission differently. If you'd rather keep your distance, we've got you covered. Okay. Amy is a drone expert. What have we here? A real tech connoisseur. I hate spiders, but love this one. What an adorable creepy crawler. Here we are. Let's class the place up. A drone expert does have the unique ability to summon their own drone. This little darling is fast and stealthy. She aims, she fires, she hits. So it seems like basically what they're doing is um, every character is divided into essentially a class, and that's how they do the massive amount of characters. She can also hack enemy oh, drones, turning the tide in her favor. And if you are not into direct confrontation, there are more ways than one to get the job done. 
Recruiting an Albion officer like Brielle here might be challenging, but it'll get you inside restricted Albion areas. Don't mind me, just doing recon for a bunch of insurgents. However, do anything suspicious and she'll probably wind up with a bullet in the back of her head. You've been approved for entry. We're missing the human element here. I can get the defense minister on the line right now. Well, if you feel you must. Criminals running our streets, illegals threatening our families, the police commissioner himself, assassinated by terrorists. Well, that seems to be enough evidence. Next up, we're crashing Mary Kelly's organ farming operation and putting a stop to it. That's good. The buyers expect high quality stuff. And we need a hard nut for this. Impairing our frontal lobe again, are we? Bags. Don't disturb me in my natural habitat. Say hello Thanks. to Mickey. The man lives for his team. I put another air on my chest. And doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. Okay, so now I got some more combat. He does have a slight drinking problem, though. He's passed out. Ah, oh, well. God damn it. We'll come back to him. You know what? Let's go with someone a bit more professional. <gasps> it's almost crass to call him a hitman. Oh boy. A hitman. Oh, this music, though. Some might even call him an artist. Here's the bastard responsible. Ah, <sighs> done and dusted. Okay. Not bad, not bad if I do say so, innit? Not everyone in London is a legendary assassin or a super spy, but everyone can be a hero. So get out there, find the best recruits, and build your resistance. It's time to take back London. Damn. Actually, looks pretty good. I'll give him that. Yeah. His Ubisoft stuff usually ain't that great. Plunging the uh, player into a living, breathing city, teeming with unique locales and characters, has always been a central pillar of the Watch Dogs series. So what goes into building those worlds? Here's Amanda Mutt to tell us more. Okay. My name's Amanda Mutt. I'm a level artist on Watch Dogs Legion at Ubisoft Toronto. Definitely going really in-depth on this Being a level artist, I think, is the coolest job in video games because we do get the freedom to, to kind of, like, pick and choose what little details we want to depict. And we get we'll say the levels look pretty damn good. to tell the stories that we want to tell in the spaces that we're assigned to. Like a cyberpunk I have the London capacity basically. to hide things and, you know, like, small little Easter eggs. In AC Unity, there was a boat somewhere in the world that was covered in cats. And then it happened again in Watch Dogs 2, and there may or may not be something in London that is a boat filled with cats in some capacity. So. Got that <laughs> I was cat boat. enough to go to E3 last year. Some of the people that I was showing our demo to were from London, so no matter where I dropped them in the city, they would go, oh my god, this feels like Camden, this, you know, this feels like Southwark, this feels like Westminster. When people are talking about some detail that I've put into the world and they're excited about it, like that feels so good as somebody who, you know, builds these worlds with care. I love it. <laughs> okay, Brawlhalla. And now some news for Brawlhalla fans. 
In just a few weeks, you'll be able to battle it out with your favorite legends on iOS and Android devices. Eh. I mean, good. You know, it's a free game and shit, and that would work pretty decently on there, probably, but, eh. I say, oh, I got it on Three, Switch, and I don't two, have to play with anyway, one, so. Brawl. I just love this game. It's basically, like, the freaking, like, Smash Bros. of, like, indie games and, like, big T cartoons and shit. They got like Adventure Time characters and a bunch of other stuff in there. Yeah, so many characters. Now, whether you need a Tom Clancy action fix on the go, or want to dive back into one of the most beloved fantasy franchises in gaming, we've got you covered. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so we got this friggin' shit. Like Dungeons and Dragons kind of stuff. Yeah, I really don't care about this game, so, yeah. The target is being held on the ground floor. Okay, so now I got some Hubble Elite Squad. Got this damn music always. Contact! Mount Chain is down! Request air support. Target northeast rooftop. Roger. Inbound. Danger close. I need an EMP deployed now. EMP imminent. Get back in your cell! So, uh, so far, it doesn't really tell me anything hey, about what this six. game actually is. Don't make me regret this. It's clearly like a sheet thing, but okay, it's Tom Clancy game. Yeah. yeah, it's on mobile. God damn it. Speaking of Tom Clancy, it's been five years since Rainbow Six Siege first launched, and the community has never been stronger. Five In years, so they gonna maybe make a new Ubisoft game. Ubisoft Montreal has put together a special video to thank all the amazing players and developers that have helped Siege become the game it is today. In December 2015, a small team released Rainbow Six Siege. A game built on a strong vision, creativity, competitiveness, and team play. For the player, the 1st of December is a beginning, but for us too. You have to engage and say to the player, this game is installed, you can install it too, and we are there. That original vision was quickly adopted by our passionate community, propelling it to a whole new level. Yeah, I will say, obviously, not a game for me because I don't really play shooters to begin with, but also like online competitive stuff. Well, I mean, I've heard it's not a bad game, you know, for what it is, so. 
one year anniversary of Rainbow Six now, game being uh, stronger than ever, uh, more players today than we had in the past, it means uh, the world to us. But we also had our share of challenges. Um, health that touches upon subjects like matchmaking, connectivity, all those aspects are absolutely critical to the experience of the player. Through it all, we're always driven by you. Our I kind of love how they just acknowledge, like, together, yeah, we failed a bit, we but, stronger. you know, yeah. There is no sequel like it's good to see a company acknowledge its fault years, sometimes. Expect more Rainbow Six in your life for quite some time. I do wonder if maybe they'll eventually make a new game. Yeah. It's like five years since they have a good time to move on. Que de vous. Ce jeu well, and autant next le vôtre qu'il est le nôtre, nous l'équipe de développement. Now 60 million players strong. We're just getting started. <laughs> From the devs that build the game to the community that plays it. Thank you. If you haven't tried it yet, dive into our new Operation Steel Wave update available now and take Ace and Malusi out for a spin. A few days ago. Okay, so now we got the new Hyperscape new multiplayer game. Shooter. Now it's time to venture into the Hyperscape. But yeah, I will say so far though, this is an infinitely better presentation than the past years. And like, honestly, it's probably one of the best presentations that I think I've seen so far this year, other than Devolver. But I mean, Devolver is Devolver, nothing can top that. But like, just format wise, they're just going quick back to back and shit, and they're actually showing gameplay too. A hack in the hyperscape. That's not supposed to be there. Well, let me get you all up to speed, okay? About 30 years ago, everything that we feared about our future started to come true. We made some good decisions. We made some bad decisions. Actually, we made a lot of bad decisions. So, here we are. Ten billion souls living in the crush of the megacities. But the people at Prisma changed everything. But yeah, I'm not really interested that much. I don't think I'm really in this game, but I mean, hey, it's got cyberpunk-esque kind of feel. The Hyperscape. In the Hyperscape, the biggest draw by far is Crown Rush. Like, that way out kind of thing. Yeah. Can become someone. That's, like, that's why I'm not really interested. Like, not only shooter, but it's about a battle royale. Well, I do love the cyberpunk aesthetic. Like, I, I could definitely see myself listening to this OST at the very least. Damn. If you get good at Crown Rush, it can change your life. Really? Can it? Strange things have been happening lately. Rumors of people getting hurt. God, Users this just visual attack is just the real amazing. World. A darker secret lies at the heart of Hyperscape, and we have to find it. Some of us are searching for a way up, some of us for a way out, and for others, a new way altogether. That's what brings us to the edge of the future. But yeah, honestly, like, this seems like a game. lot of damn plot for a Battle Royale game. Like, I almost wonder if there might be, like, a single-player story. I'm JC, creative it. director on Hyperscape. JC's work on Far Cry Primal and multiple Prince of Persia titles has established him as a top creative here at Ubisoft. For me, what's exciting is uh, we started uh, building it from scratch, uh, seeing it grow, uh, adding ideas uh, is really cool. Hello, contender. Welcome to the hyperscape. The game takes place in 2054. It's in a future where humanity has grown a little darker. 
one of the, the companies there, they are launching what's called the Hyperscape, which is a virtual world and the internet of the future. It's the place where everything converges. Yeah, I will say, like, visualize uh, this thing definitely looks outstanding, but it's like, that takes place as a battle royale, of and arcade. it's, you know, like a shooter, and nah. But the only battle royales I really play are the non-shooter ones, and I really play those are, because, again, battle royale. Then you also introduce royale. a lot of new things. You get the opportunity to do parkour on the rooftops, to go into interiors where it's much more narrow, much more stressful. Uh, you get to go to the landmarks where there's more uh, opportunities to get cool items, but also more players, so it's a risk-reward kind of deal. We introduce the notion of hacks, special abilities that you can pick up on the fly to adapt your tactics. With hacks, you can do things like uh, teleport yourself, uh, you can wrap yourself into a ball and uh, bounce around the battlefield. So a lot okay, that of things that let you have fun, that are toys that you can play with. And finally, it's made as a spectacle, so all the viewers will be able to interact with the game on different levels through the Twitch extension. So every few minutes, there's going to be a vote, and viewers will be able to decide what effect they want to affect the whole battle. So things like changing the gravity, uh, infinite ammo, or stuff like that. So players, while this happens, really have to adapt to all kinds of stuff that is happening. So for me, it's really exciting because right now, as we speak, we are launching the open beta, and so it's going to be available okay, for, so open uh, there now. for all PC players worldwide. And I really want to thank all the players, all the streamers, and all the viewers who participated in Tech Test and who will participate in the open beta. Here's a short glimpse of what you can expect. Okay. Watch and learn how it's done. Perfecto. Showtime. <laughs> Let's show them what I'm made of. Go time. Watch closely. Here we go. Yeah, damn. Bell bass and so. Okay, so are we moving the on to now? The world of the hyperscape gave our artists and developers incredible freedom when it came to designing characters. Production manager Anna Maria Muska is going to take us behind the scenes okay, of so character Okay, so we're just design. gonna go more in depth. Fair enough. My name is Anna Maria Muska. I'm the production manager for characters and weapons on Hyperscape. We have paid an exceptional amount of detail to our characters. We switch different outfits, different fashion statements, different tattoos, different materials until we see them as real individuals, as real people. So the second you pick a character, you see them in game, you understand what their motivations are and what drives them and what challenges them. This was the first lineup of characters. This is our default base, but even starting from the hair down, everything has been meticulously thought of would this person actually like this type of outfit? Would this person enjoy the type of tattoos that we're putting on them? Will they actually like to be in this body? Each season, we plan to produce new outfits for these characters. So we're hoping some of our players are gonna see the effort and maybe even correlate some of the accessories to what's gonna happen in the game. We're very excited to see it in people's hands. As we move into the next generation of gaming, Ubisoft has been working closely with console makers to take advantage of all the extraordinary capabilities these new consoles will offer. Now we have a special guest to tell us a little more. Oh God, it's hey, Phil. Phil Spencer from Xbox. With Watch Dogs Legion, Ubisoft is supporting smart delivery. So you will get the absolute best version of the game on any version of Xbox you're playing on. Smart delivery. On Fair Series enough. X, you'll get to take advantage of the amazing work the team has done with DirectX ray tracing. 
to create an absolutely immersive version of London like you've never seen before. Ubisoft has a unique ability to create immersive worlds, setting a new bar that continues to drive our industry forward. I'm a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I love the time I've spent exploring the world in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And I can't wait for you to see the gameplay from Assassin's Creed Valhalla that's coming up now. All right. Okay, you know so now we got Valhalla. hear more about this game since it was announced back in April. And now it's time for a deep dive into the world of Vikings. My name is Julien Laferriere, and I'm the producer of Assassin's Creed Valhalla. So a couple of weeks ago, we announced Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and the reaction from the fans was just amazing. The time period of Vikings is really, really inspiring. When we did our research, we found that, you know, there were not mindless barbarians. Vikings were actually farmers trying to find new lands for them to settle. And so they had really human motivations. So for us to have this opportunity to tell kind of the real story about Vikings and kind of separate ourselves from the myths and the folklore is really something that drove us to, to make this game. The team went to Norway and England to take the same roads that the Vikings did to really experience what it meant to be a Viking at that time. And then leaving Norway, which is barren but majestic, and just coming by boat in England and see those rolling green hills full of sheep, full of life, is just this okay, yeah, so Ubisoft just sent a tweet saying we'll be giving our awards to all of you the Vikings if you are unable to log in. Felt so. as well. You need to see this land of opportunity. And this is exactly the feeling we want players to experience in this game. It is a personal adventure, you know? It is the story of Eivor, a Viking chieftain. Eivor is uh, either a male or a female. You decide when you start the game. They will have to leave Norway to settle in England because you just can't live in Norway anymore. There's too much political pressure, no resources available. Obviously, in England, it's full of Anglo-Saxons and other people, and they don't really want you there. So you will have to fight your way there to kind of build your own settlement and see your clan prosper. Vikings were brutal warriors. Shields! And the fact that they were mastering a lot of weapons coming from the medieval times really inspired us to kind of revamp the fight system. To leverage the brutality and the intensity of Viking combat. Vikings were not only fighting face to face, they were masters of stealth and deception when needed. They used basically any sort of tactics they could use to win the battle. So we want to portray the full range of combat that you can imagine coming from the Vikings. We are very happy to finally be able to show you the game we've all been working on. So please enjoy this deep dive into Assassin's okay. Creed Valhalla. So now we're getting a deep dive. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, you will relive the epic saga of the Viking invasion of England. You play as Eivor, a Viking from Norway, who will lead his or her battle-hardened warriors across the North Sea to the British Isles. Eivor is driven by an ambitious goal, to build a thriving Norse settlement in a hostile land. For the good of our clan, it is time we go a Viking. Today we raid, that tomorrow we may build. England is a dark age tangle of broken kingdoms and warring dynasties. A land of opportunity and riches. As you prowl England's rivers by longship, you may raid locations you spot from the shoreline. Ground your ship and blow your horn to lead your raiding crew into battle.
crew will assist you on all your raids. Fighting enemies. Battering down doors. And stealing cargo too heavy for one set of arms. Whatever riches and resources you pillage may be used to develop your settlement, giving you access to useful services, better tools, and new settlers. At the heart of your settlement is the Alliance map. It will serve as a record of the allies you have made, and a guide for future opportunities. The Viking Age was a time of warriors and legends. But yeah, it feels like they definitely should have Valhalla, actually shown this during the Xbox the instead, of instead. You know, instead of the gameplay the trailer they Creed actually game. showed. That was kind of Every archetype offers a unique challenge. Some will coordinate with their allies for special attacks, while others will use nearby objects to their advantage, including the bodies of fallen warriors. To face these attacks, you must find and exploit your opponent's weaknesses to gain the upper hand. Take the fight to your foes with a host of brutal new combat abilities. Snare them with a Viking harpoon. Pummel them with throwing axes. Incapacity. Yeah, I mean, like this devil looks decent to keep them at like a discreet, but I don't or really. Them off. God, fucking. Duel oh yeah, that menu is literally the exact same as combination of attacks. Odyssey or whatever. Customize your fighting style as you see fit, and become a legendary Viking warrior. All combinations of weapons are available to dual wield, including two shields. Not all situations call for violence. In this new land, a Viking must find a way to adapt. As Eivor is not welcome in England, you may need to outsmart your enemies. Avoiding unwanted attention in towns and bustling cities. Use Eivor's hood and cloak to blend with crowds. I just love seeing the random assassin text pop around. An unseen hunter among the people. From capital cities and villages to the dense forests and rolling hills of England, exploration is vital to keeping yourself sharp. You must feed off the land if you hope to endure. Hunt and forage to replenish your health and fortify your equipment. Search pagan temples and Roman ruins for new activities and challenges to strengthen yourself and your settlement. The more you explore, the more of England's secrets you will reveal. Ravens, show! No mercy! But as you push deeper into England, the enemy will push back. In a series of climactic moments, Assassin's Creed Valhalla will feature massive assaults in which you will lead Eivor's army into battle against heavily guarded Saxon fortresses. Today, we will reclaim her. Today, we fight for your land. And tomorrow, we rebuild. For Easter. For Easter. Easter. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will transport you to wondrous and haunted lands inspired by Norse myths and England's pagan roots. It will challenge and surprise Thank you, with unforgettable characters, thrilling triumphs, and tragic losses, giving you the chance. I was like, this one I probably forgot to update the title on. This one website. Not the damn way. I completely forgot to change the title. Whoops. Yeah, November 17th. Actually, kind of sponsored. Sooner. It's truly unlike anything the franchise has seen before. Assassin's Creed Valhalla will release this holiday season on Xbox Series X, PlayStation 5, Xbox One. PS4, PC, and Stadia. We're close to wrapping up today, but before we go, our CEO, Eve Guimau, is here to share a few words. I hope you will have enjoyed what you have seen today. 
and that you will love playing these games. I'm proud of our teams for delivering an ambitious, broad and creative lineup of games. And we haven't shown you everything yet. In fact, we have a lot more to come. So you will have another Ubisoft forward to reveal even more about our upcoming games. Mm. But before see they're doing more of these. this show, we have one more thing to share with so, you. So yeah, this is going to be a late Far Cry, obviously. But yeah, do Far Cry and shit. Actual, like, main entry. Good for the money, so. Uh, good for the people who want that. But I definitely wonder what happened to their, like, Breath of the Wild looking game, Gods and Monsters. Like, it was, you know, announced, supposed to be coming out, like, early 2020, infinitely delayed because of the virus, and now, nothing. Okay, so now we got a bit more in depth look, I guess. No. It's beautiful, Migo. Perfect, but useless. <laughs> 